The city is trying a new approach to redeveloping some of its public properties instead of issuing detailed guidelines for one property at a time. The city is asking for ideas on a large inventory. Responders have also been encouraged to think of new ways for city assets to be combined with housing. To tell us about the process and some of the responses, he has an, our an advisor to the mayor's chief of housing, Margo Kramer, and the housing advisor to the mayor's housing innovation lab, Joe Backer. Thank you both very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Margo, explain first, of all, why have this kind of a process and for so many different assets? That's a great question. Um, we're lucky at the mayor's housing innovation lab to have the chance to really experiment and take a look at new approaches to solving some of the city's hardest issues around housing. And we thought after seeing other cities have success with co-locating housing and public assets that it would be something we should really explore in Boston. Uh, Joe, in this process, what you're looking for from responders, it, it, this isn't just a comment on, on Facebook here. You're looking for something with at least a certain amount of detail. So explain, what did they have to provide? Yeah, I think what we were looking for was a range of ideas. Uh, the city doesn't have all of the answers for how this might unfold. And the folks that we reached out to are the ones who do this on a daily basis. And so we were really interested in understanding how they would think about this problem or this approach and what they would see as the most important uh, pieces to put into place and the, the challenges that remain. Uh, Margo, of uh, course, uh, talking about some of the responses here, I mean, there's, there's no surprise that somebody had ideas for 26 Court Street because of where it is <laughs> and how big it is. But uh, uh, talk about some of the places that were, you wouldn't think that would be so exciting. Yeah, uh, we saw a range of responses, which was really neat, and it speaks to the potential for this idea. I was really excited to see communities and neighborhood groups respond in support of this idea, and that was really exciting for us. It was also neat to see different propo proposals think about using things like things that they see in their community that might be underutilized, and that sort of took on a variety of forms. But those were things that we might not notice um, as just the Housing Innovation Lab, and it's really valuable to get community feedback on right. that. And, and just to go uh, to show some of the variety here, uh, one of those places that was underused it was in Mattapan, the former uh, city uh, hospital grounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Boston Public Health Commission has a large campus down there, and you know, there's a lot of potential for putting housing there or doing all kinds of things. And they've done some development there, and, and it's really been great to get input on what else could be there. Joe, so there was recently a showcase of these ideas. Uh, what was that like? It was really exciting. There were a couple dozen of respondents who were in the building just to share their ideas and, and show what they had put together in a very short period of time. Uh, there was a lot of variety, as Margot mentioned, in the types of approaches that people were bringing and a lot of excitement about the idea and where it might go from here. Uh, what about the value of just getting people like that in one room to sort of, you know, ripple out with their energy? Yeah. Their, uh, is there something that to be gained from that, you say? I think the Housing Innovation Lab benefits most when people from a, a number of different perspectives are brought in and they bring their energy and their expertise and you never really know what you're going to get out of that. And in this case, it was a lot of really interesting ideas spanning 26 Court Street all the way to Mattapan and, and in between. Margo, another sizable um, asset that people had ideas about was Boston Fire Headquarters, mm -hmm. uh, South Hampton Street and mm -hmm. Mass Ave. And uh, there were different kinds of ideas for how that could be used too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, as, as you saw, and anyone who wants to look at the responses, they can go see them online. Um, but the, the types, we were not prescriptive in the request for information, and we got to see really the variety that, that we've been highlighting here. Um, and it's good to have that input and those options because we really need to assess any of these projects, were any to move forward or any type of project in this area to move forward. It would really need to be done on a sort of neighborhood um, asset specific basis. So to have a lot of different options for each place that we're looking at is, is valuable. Joe, sure, uh, well, one thing that, that, that uh, occurred to me when I saw some of these properties and some of the responses, um, I was thinking of places as being transit oriented and great for housing that I never thought about before, like like that Mattapan location. It, you, know, you take that new pedestrian bridge across the river and you're at a station on the trolley line. Yeah, I think folks look at these assets and they see how they fit into the community and one of those 
ways is, is with transit and access to it. And that's exactly where we saw the value of offering up this list of, of city-owned assets and seeing what uh, different folks and different developer groups would come up with. Uh, Margo, another idea that was floated here was um, housing on top of a branch library in South Boston mm -hmm. in that commercial strip there near Flood Square. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 20 years ago, people would say, are you crazy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but we're in different times, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we certainly are. And we got a, uh, a really interesting response about affordable housing in South Boston and some other proposals about market rate housing. Um, it, it just indicates that that's a really great place to be and that the community uh, is interested in, in both housing, affordable housing, and m making its library um, serve the community as best it can. Joe, what's the next uh, stop in the process from, from this point? Well, the city spent a lot of time thinking about how this might work from a process standpoint, and now we've been able to go out into the community and ask them what the best ideas are and, and where they see this going. And now uh, we sort of need to merge those two things and think about the challenges that lie ahead in terms of picking the most feasible sites and, and beginning a really rigorous community outreach process so that uh, public benefits can be defined as the driving piece of any. Now, when you say public benefits, I mean the affordable housing, number one, but, but in addition to that, what, what are we thinking of? Well, these are assets that in many cases uh, are in straight, uh, they, they really need revitalization. They, they could use these resources and oftentimes developers can bring more resource, resources to the table than maybe the city had uh, ready in the budget. And so another public benefit of this process is finding those development partners who are prepared to deliver a state-of-the-art library as well as affordable housing. Yeah. Margaret, another thing the city is exploring in a way is plug-in housing. Mm -hmm. In fact, we can all explore if we want to go to City Hall Plaza yeah. for the next few days. What, what, what's the purpose of that? Oh, that's a really good question. I'm glad you brought it up. Hopefully folks will have a chance to go see it on City Hall Plaza. Um, the plug-in house is a is a conversation starter, and it wants. We're hoping to get feedback from Boston residents and communities about what they think about the type of structure that the plug-in house is. It, it's a structure made out of panels that can be assembled really quickly, um, and more affordably than traditional building methods. And it might be a good fit for, say, a house in someone's backyard if they have a large enough space, and if we can add housing to backyards, and if communities think that's a good idea, that could make a dent in some of our housing challenges.